Pokemon Red, but every move is flying type. That's right. We're back after like a month. I got married and went on honeymoon. We did all sorts of stuff, but back to the old grind. Funny Gen 1 Pokemon content. All right, flying type is one of those types that I personally don't really think much about in Gen 1 because I mean, there's not really that many good flying type moves. You got Drill Peck and that's pretty much it. So with all moves now being flying type, how will this run go and will any fights be noticeably easier or harder? Let's find out. I start off by picking up Charmander and naming it Firefly. I will be using Firefly in this run because of course Charizard is part flying type and we will have Stab Slash and that's just too good to pass up. Going through Viridian Forest, bug types are super easy to knock out since every move is now super effective against them. Pretty much everything in here is a one hit except for Pikachu since it's electric type and resists flying type moves. At level 12, I fight the junior trainer in Brock's gym just to see where we're at and we're not quite doing enough damage to win the fight. I come back at level 15 and this time Diglett is a two hit and we get a lucky burn on Sandshrew which is great because that means we'll eventually knock it out even after it uses all those sand attacks. With junior trainer down, Let's take on Brock. I start off just testing the waters on damage and a crit ember did about what I was expecting. Remember all moves are now flying type which means all moves are physical and resisted by rock type Pokemon. I start going for Growl just to get Geodude's attack as low as possible and then maybe we can get a lucky six burns in a row for a pseudo leech seed stall strat? I mean that is pretty wishful thinking but it could happen. Spoiler alert, it does not happen but after a lot of back and forth Firefly does eventually knock out the Geodude and it still has half its health going into Onyx. Onyx is arguably easier than Geonude in this situation simply because it has no way to raise its defense stat once we lower it. And we get free turns to use Leer and Growl when it uses Bide, which it does quite a lot. Way more than it normally does, actually. And because of that, Firefly knocks out the Onyx after taking no damage from it. We're already past Brock, and Firefly deservedly evolves into Charmeleon. Moving on to Mount Moon, I talk to this completely reputable salesman, and yes, I am, of course, buying this Magikarp. I debated on whether I was going to use Aerodactyl or Gyarados in this run, and I ultimately settled on the latter since I would be able to use it for considerably more of the playthrough. But for now, Waterfly is just a humble Magikarp that needs a whole lot of switch training. And switch train we do, getting Waterfly up to level 12 after defeating all of the trainers in Mount Moon, which level 12 isn't very high at all, but it will definitely be worth it in the end. Making it to Cerulean City, we fight the trainers in Misty's gym and lose against the junior trainer because my confusion luck still sucks. We won on the rematch though, just putting that out there. I decide to take on Rival first instead of Misty because why not? I'm also still switch training Magikarp because there shouldn't be anything on Rival's team to really worry about. Pidgeotto has stab moves, but it's not good, so it shouldn't be a threat. I always forget about Sand Attack. And after missing a couple and Pidgeotto landing several attacks, Firefly isn't looking too great on health. Rival sends out Abra, which, yes, still knows double kick, and unironically, that might actually have cost us the fight. I don't trust the swap in on Rattata, so I just knock it out with a couple of hits from Firefly. After that, Rival sends out his Ace Squirtle, and we get a lucky burn, and Firefly lives on 1 HP, allowing it to do a little more damage before going down. Hopefully, that's all we need to stall it out with Waterfly. Of course, Waterfly can't do anything offensively, so we'll have to rely on Rival making poor decisions to win the battle. Bubble and Tackle aren't doing a whole lot, thanks to Burn, but then Squirtle gets a crit, taking Waterfly way down to 10 HP. And two turns later, it gets another crit, because of course it does. I'm not salty or anything, but I looked it up, and Squirtle in Gen 1 has a crit rate of about 8.4%. So Rival getting two crits that close together is, is par for the course. After that loss, I try Misty just to see what happens, and we lose. I might could have won had I not been greedy and switched trained Waterfly, and going back to the rival fight, I lead off with Firefly instead of Waterfly, hoping that that might make the difference. Pidgeotto gets some sand attacks off before going down, and I'm able to swap into Waterfly on Abra to get Firefly's accuracy back up. Abra then goes down, Rotata goes down, and Squirtle looks like it should be pretty easy, so I swap into Waterfly to get it some experience before swapping back into Firefly to knock it out. And that's Cerulean Rival. Was that harder than it needed to be? Yes. And that's partly my fault and wanting so badly to get Waterfly leveled up. But there will be plenty of opportunities for it to gain levels coming up, so nothing was really lost.
We make it past the trainers in Cerulean Cape and into Bill's house, and he is so impressed that Waterfly knocked out Oddish that he gives me a free ticket to board the SS Anne. With the ticket in hand, we make a beeline to the daycare man. That's right, I am done with Switch training. I'd rather just pay a fee for instant gratification. Thank you, America. So we let the daycare man watch Waterfly as we walk around his house. We get it back out when it's a level 19, and I use a rare candy to get it to level 20, where it finally evolves into Gyarados. And it learns Bite. Let's rematch Misty. And you know what? We're just gonna win. We're just gonna win because Misty's got nothing on Waterfly's stab bite. Holy cow! <laughs> I must admit, I was not expecting that. <laughs> All right, yeah, I think, I think we won the game. I think we won the game. <laughs> Yeah, we probably won the game. Moving on to the SSN, let's go over the rules for this run. Number one, I have to nickname all my Pokemon something cool like Waterfly. Number two, no TMs or HMs other than Gym Leader TMs. Number three, no items or healing in battle. And number four, trade evolutions evolve at level 50. So looking forward a bit to Lieutenant Surge, he has electric types of course, meaning he resists our moves, but Waterfly has a move it learns on level up that will make it a whole lot easier, and it's actually learning it now, Dragon Rage. Dragon Rage is one of those direct dealing moves I talk about sometimes, always dealing 40 HP of damage and it never accounts for type effectiveness or immunity, so Lieutenant Surge's team won't resist it as it does massive damage to them. Alright, before we get there though, let's take on SSN Rival. And I mean, I think we all know how this is going to go. Pidgeotto, Raticate, and Kadabra were all one hits, and Wartortle was a two hit, resulting in a very easy rival fight. Moving right along to Lieutenant Surge, like I said before, he should be pretty easy, but let's just see if there are any shenanigans he's going to pull out. Voltorb is a two hit, landing a sonic boom on Gyarados for a bit of damage. Pikachu was also a two hit, doing very little with its Thundershock. And then Raichu was a third two hit, also doing very little with a Thundershock. I thought that surely Lieutenant Surge would present some challenge this run, but alas, Dragon Rage is just too strong. Making our way to the entrance of Rock Tunnel, I make a brief stop to catch our third and final team member, this Voltorb. I debated on whether to have a Magneton or Electrode on our final team, and I eventually settled on Electrode because we wouldn't be able to catch a Magnemite for a very long time since it can only be found in the power plant in red and blue. I give it the nickname of Electrofly, which is pretty good. I mean, I gotta say it's pretty good. And since it only has Tackle and Screech and is a pretty low level, and I forgot to get repels earlier, we train a bit on the way back to Cerulean. And along the way, I teach Thunderbolt to Electrofly. Was that a mistake since Waterfly could have learned Thunderbolt? I sure hope not. And yeah, I could reset and teach it to Waterfly instead, but I think we'll be fine. Making my way through Rock Tunnel, I mess up the Junior Trainer skip on the first try, go back to try it again, and Repel runs out, and on the third try, I just don't get it. So that's sad, and the run might not be blessed now. Taking on Lavender Rival, there's not much to say here. I switch train Electrofly a little bit, and his team is not hard to beat at all, so we get the win. I once again forget how dumb these gym trainers are to fight when we get to Erica's gym, and we get stuck in quite a few rap loops before we finally beat them all because it was a matter of pride, and let's take on Erica. Erica shouldn't be an issue at all since her team is weak to most of the moves in the game. Electrofly gets some good damage off on Victory Bell before getting put to sleep, wrapped, getting some more damage off, and then Razor Leafed. I send out Firefly to clean up Victory Bell, and that was her scariest team member because of Razor Leaf and Sleep, so the rest of her should go down easy enough. Tangela does some chip damage and gets healed a few times, but eventually goes down. And Vileplume almost knocked Firefly out with its poison and somewhat good attacks, but Firefly held on, and we had Waterfly for backup anyways, and we get the win. Stepping into the Safari Zone, I encounter and catch this Chansey that I name Eggfly, because why not? Unfortunately, it can't learn Surf, so it's just gonna hang out with us, which is fine. Jumping around a bit, we come back to Sylph, where I successfully get the skip, which invalidates all negative vibes from the other missed skips, and we have the Chansey for a times two blessed multiplier, so this run is officially blessed. And feeling blessed, I take on the Fighting Dojo, since it's easy experience, where Electrofly evolves into Electrode. I then beat up the Fighting Dojo Master and don't take Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan because they would be a terrible Pokemon for this run. Feeling even more blessed after some easy victories, let's take on Sylph Rival. And not much just changed on his team, so really it should be a pretty easy fight. One great thing that's a side effect of me picking Charmander as our starter is Rival doesn't have a Gyarados, which is terrific for us and such a nice change from the usual. And as you can see, Rival was pretty easy, using that Swag Self-Destruct to win the fight. 
After fighting the Team Rocket Grunt before Giovanni, Firefly evolves into Charizard, finally getting that stab on Slash, which we show off a bit against Giovanni, doing some major damage up until Rhyhorn, but we have Dragon Rage to use against it, and Ida Queen goes down easy enough, so no worries were had in this fight. Moving right along to Sabrina, again, this should be a relatively easy fight. Her Pokemon all have not so great defense and attack, which is great for us since every move in the game is physical. I decide to use Electrofly here since it should be an easy fight and it could use some experience. Kadabra was a two hit, Mr. Mime was a three hit eventually as it just had to stall with double slap, Venomot was a two hit and Alakazam would have been a three hit but it used Recover, then Reflect, and then, and I've said this before, it hit with the highest damaging Psy Wave I think I've ever seen doing 58 total damage. And that's just the number we see since Electrofly gets knocked out. It quite possibly could have rolled max damage on that, which I think is 64. It was really close in any case. But anyways, we won because Waterfly is OP and we get the March Badge. Now it's Koga time. We Gen 1 missed the first hit, which sounds about right for this run. And then the next turn we get Smoke Screened. But Stab Slash puts in the absolute work. We only see one more miss in the battle and we take Koga down. Moving on to Blaine. Again, don't think there's much to say here as flying is neither weak nor resisted by his team. Is what I would say, but Blaine stacks the Growls up on Waterfly and then knocks it out with a takedown and a couple of Fire Blasts from Arcanine. This is the most offensive I've ever seen Arcanine be. I swap into Electrofly, but Thunderbolt ends up doing very little, so I go for Self-Destruct Swag, and it does not knock the Arcanine out, thanks to that burn, I guess. Maybe Firefly can come out and finish it off. Okay, good. Blaine's finally down. And we receive the Fire Blast TM from winning that fight, and I go ahead and teach it to Waterfly just to utilize its super high attack stat. Giovanni is last in the gym run, and this is where things might get a bit harder. He does have a Rhyhorn and a Rhydon that resist flying and have super good defense. But as you can see, Leer lowered that super good defense enough on the Rhyhorn to where Fire Blast hits super hard and Waterfly could finish it off with a bite. I then swap into Electrofly who hits a Swift through Dugdrio's dig because Swift is cool like that, then finishes off the Dugdrio in a couple more hits. Nido Queen comes out, Electrofly hits it with a Screech to lower its defense before Giovanni uses a Guard Spec, and I've learned to watch out for those now. Thunderbolt ends up being a three hit, which isn't too bad. Nidoking comes out next, goes into Thrash immediately, and knocks out Electrofly with just a sliver of health, but Waterfly comes out to finish it off with Bite. All this left is Rhydon, so we start using Leer. Rhydon Stomp hits really hard. We get another Leer off, and Giovanni uses a Guard Spec. I misclick and go for another Leer. Rhydon fails a Horn Drill. Waterfly misses with Fire Blast. Rhydon hits with another Stomp, taking Waterfly down to 24 HP. Then Fire Blast finally connects, doing about a third and getting a burn on Rhydon, which is great for us, cutting Rhydon's attack stat. And after a couple more turns, Waterfly is able to tank another stomp and finish off the Rhydon to get the win on Giovanni. That fight was a bit more exciting than it normally is, and with the gym run done, let's move on into the late game, starting with Viridian Rival. His team has now grown to include a Rhyhorn, but it goes down easy enough to Firefly after stacking a few Leer on it. The next few Pokemon on his team go down pretty quick and we get to Blastoise. I set up a couple Leer on Blastoise just to lower its defense a bit before it knocks out Flyerfly. Flyerfly. I send out Electrofly that hits a second turn Screech, but then gets two unlucky Thunderbolt crits in a row. Luckily, the next hit does not crit and we knock it out after one last Thunderbolt, winning the penultimate fight against Rival. So, going into the Elite Four, our team is looking pretty good. Charizard has Flamethrower now, which does more damage than Ember. It doesn't do as much as Slash because of Slash's crits, but it does also have that chance to burn, which could come in clutch. I've taught Bubble Beam to Waterfly over Bite since it does do a bit more damage and it can lower speed. Not sure if we'll need that, but it could come in handy. And Electrofly still has its same moveset, which, I mean, I briefly debated teaching it Toxic, but since we have a full team of Glass Cannons, I feel like Toxic would not be a great player. All right, here we go. Lorelei time. She, of course, sends out Dugong, and I send out Flyerfly, and luckily for us, she uses turn one rest. Two slashes take it down to a sliver, and Lorelei uses a super potion, which gives us a free turn to knock it out. Cloyster is up next, and this thing is a defensive tank, so I immediately start going for Leer. After just two, and after it takes Flyerfly to just over half, Flamethrower does about half to Cloyster and gets the burn. Unfortunately, Cloyster crits with its spike cannon doing some good damage before Flyerfly knocks it out with another Flamethrower. Slowbro comes out, and this could be scary in that it knows withdraw and can boost its defense. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, crits bypass stat changes, so Slash will bypass withdraw, and you'd be right, but I don't think about that for some reason and instead just spam Flamethrower. And what can I say, Fire goes burr and knocks it out. 
Next up is Jinx, which has super low defense, so it's a one-shot, and finally Lore sends out Lapras. Lapras is pretty bulky, so I start setting up Leer so one of my other Pokemon can knock it out. Unfortunately, Firefly only gets one Leer off because of that Confuse Ray, but that should be enough to make it easier for Waterfly. Fire Blast does not get the one hit, but it does get the burn, and Lapras goes for the Confuse Ray Troll. Waterfly hits itself in Confusion next round, but Lapras's Hydro Pump is doing next to nothing, and Waterfly hits Bubble Beam on the next turn, knocking out the Lapras and getting the win. Overall, Lorelei wasn't too bad, and actually a bit easier than I expected with how bulky her Pokemon are. Moving on to Bruno, Bruno was a bit of a slog with his Onyxes and their high defense, Harden, and Bruno's X defense, but I mean, it's Bruno. His Hitmons and Modchamp go down super easy. All total, we lost 71 HP in that fight, so no worries at all. Agatha is up next, and I'm a little scared about this fight. There's no type effectiveness things to worry about, but she can just be kind of mean. So let's just see what happens. I lead off with Electrofly in this fight just so that I know that I outspeed everything. Turn 1 Crit Thunderbolt does about a third to Gengar, and Agatha swaps out into Golbat. Electrofly gets another crit off on Golbat, also doing about a third. Luckily, Electrofly hits through Confusion to score another crit, and then after quite a bit of Agatha style back and forth, Electrofly finally knocks out the Golbat. Reverse Gengar comes back out, and turn 1 is a bust for both of us. Turn 2, Electrofly hits a good Thunderbolt, and Gengar tries for Dream Eater again. Then, for some reason, I go for Swift instead of Thunderbolt, letting Gengar confuse Electrofly. After some more Agatha style back and forth, Electrofly lands a Thunderbolt, knocking out the Gengar. Haunter's out next, and I'm thinking it'll be a two hit if we live. And Electrofly gets the paralysis, Haunter is fully paralyzed, and Electrofly knocks it out. Arbok comes out next, and we go for Screech because it'll probably knock Electrofly out this turn, but it doesn't, so we get some damage off of Thunderbolt for going down. Agatha is almost done, and we just lost our first team member, so we're looking pretty good. Firefly comes out to finish the Arbok, and we're down to her last Gengar. Slash almost one-shots the Gengar that goes for an inconsequential Toxic, letting Firefly hit with another Slash, getting us the easy win on Agatha. Okay, Lance time. I am very worried about Lance. Not only does he have a Gyarados and Dragonite, but he also has an Aerodactyl, which not only has Stab, Hyper Beam, and Takedown, but also resists all my moves. Just a tad scary. I go ahead and use all my rare candies here, teaching Electrofly Explosion over Self-Destruct, getting it and Firefly up to level 50, and Waterfly up to level 51. Alright, toughest fight in the game. I guess the Elite Four member a lot of people joke about being a flying type trainer. Let's do this. Let's just do it. Let's just full send. Full send it. We're going. We got Xenoblade music backing us up. We got this. We're in the hero arc now. This is it. This is the this is the match of the this is the match of the run here. Fire Blast knocks it. It doesn't knock it out. <laughs> we lived! Okay, okay, okay. That's awesome. And Bubble Beam knocks it out. Okay. Oh man. Alright, uh Bubble Beam. How much does Bubble Beam do? That was a crit, all right? And, oh, Hyper Beam. Dragon Rage sucks. Uh, we have to, uh, I don't want to swap because what about Hyper Beam? Fire Blast hits? Yes, Fire Blast hits. All right, all right, all right. Aerodactyl outspeeds, easy, all right. Uh, let's go with Firefly. Let's use Leer. Aerodactyl is so scary. Uh, we just lost. We, yeah, we just lost. We just lost, yeah. So, Aerodactyl was kind of brutal. I take the L and the experience and go right back in. I think with Lance at this level, we're going to have to hope for a miss from Aerodactyl. Hyper Beam and Takedown both have a chance to miss, so it's a possibility. Against Bruno in the next run, Waterfly learns Hyper Beam, which gives us a little more possible damage against Aerodactyl if it one-shots. If it doesn't one-shot, Waterfly will lose a turn and probably get knocked out. The first three members of Elite Four are easy enough, so we breeze right through them. Let's take on Lance again. Turn 1 Hyper Beam does not knock out the lead Gyarados at this level, but maybe if we were leveled a bit more it will consistently? And Gyarados capitalizes on that by dealing massive damage with Hydro Pump before Waterfly knocks it out. Swapping into Firefly, we knock out the two Dragonair with no real issue, but it knocks out Firefly with a bite. I swap into Electrofly for a Swag Explosion, please work! It did so little, and Aerodactyl outspeeds Waterfly, so that's that. Two tries later, we come back to Lance. Waterfly is level 55. Let's just see what it can do now. 
I'm not sure if Hyper Beam will one-shot the lead Gyarados at this level, so I use Bubble Beam to make sure it's in range, but Waterfly lands a crit doing some massive damage, Gyarados uses Leer, and the next Bubble Beam knocks it out. Already looking really good. Fire Blast one-shots Dragonair number one and Dragonair number two, Aerodactyl comes out and misses a Supersonic, which is the best thing it could have done. Fire Blast hits and does over half. Aerodactyl crits on the next turn doing major damage to Waterfly with takedown, but it's so low on health it's no worries that Hyper Beam knocks it out. I guess a miss would have been bad there, but Hyper Beaming the Aerodactyl was more about sending a message than anything. Dragonite is Lance's ace and we haven't seen it yet, but I don't think we need to worry too much. Waterfly crits with Fire Blast just missing a one hit, but Lance wastes his turn with that Hyper Potion. Next turn Fire Blast lands again and Dragonite uses Agility. Then Dragonite uses Agility again, and Waterfly lands Hyper Beam, finally getting the win against Lance. Let's go. The Flying Type Elite 4 member is finally defeated. Let's move on to Champion. And it's time for Champion. All right, we got this, I think. This this might be the end of the run. Here we go. Uh, Pidgeot is going to be a two hit. Inconsequential Whirlwind. You'll love to see it. Alakazam, super low defense, super low attack, wasn't even an issue. Rhydon, let's, yeah, stay in with Charizard. Let's use some Leer. All right, badge boost up with me a little bit. Flamethrower, how much did that do? Not a whole lot. Keep those badge boosts coming. Rear attack hurts. All right, Rhydon's finally down. Uh, slash, probably should have went for Ember there. Or, not Ember, Flamethrower. Okay, we leveled up. That means our badge boosts are gone. Slash, if one hits the Executor. All right, let's use a Leer. Let's get Blastoise softened up a little bit for Electrofly to come out. And you already know, we got to use Explosion. It did not knock it out. <laughs> okay, well, Fire Blast. All right, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Pokemon Red, but every move is Flying type is done. And I got to say, Lance was definitely the hardest part of this run. Him and all his Flying types. Aerodactyl was way harder than I thought it would be, and now I really want to use it in one of these runs. And can we get a little love for Electrofly? I mean, it wasn't the best Pokemon. It didn't knock out that Blastoise with Explosion, which was kind of sad, but it's got such a great nickname. You just gotta love it. Thank you so much for watching. Up next in the Every Pokemon is a Certain Type in Gen 1 series will be Fairy Type. I'm excited about that. I hope you are too. Poison types might be a viable option for once. After that, who knows? Dragon's Dogma 2 came out and I'm wanting to get some stuff set up for that. One of my Starfield challenges has been on the back burner for a while, so I might do that one, or I might lean into some more Pokemon, who knows? If any of those stick out to you, or if you want to see anything else that's similar, let me know down below. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.